energy transformations. Wikipedia here. I'll go ahead and explain how it relates to stellar metamorphosis. But first, energy transformation, also termed energy conversion, is the process of changing energy from one of its forms into another. In physics, energy is a quantity, it's not a quantity, it's actual quality of something, <clears throat> that provides the capacity to perform many actions, such as simple, some as simple as lifting or warming an object. In addition to being convertible, energy is transferable to a different location or object, but it cannot be created or destroyed. Energy in many forms may be used in natural processes or to provide some energy, some service to society, such as heating, refrigeration, lighting, and performing mechanical work to operate machines. For example, in order to heat your home, your furnace can burn fuel, whose chemical potential energy is thus converted into thermal energy which is then transferred into your home's air in order to raise its temperature. In another example, an internal combustion engine burns gasoline to cause pressure that pushes the pistons, thus performing work in order to accelerate your vehicle, ultimately converting the fuel's chemical energy to your vehicle's additional kinetic energy corresponding to its increase in speed. And on this page... Entropy and limitations in conversion of thermal energy to other types. I'll go ahead and skip the first paragraph. I'll read the second one and then overview that. Though conversion of thermal energy to other forms, thus re re reducing the temperature of a system, has strict limitations, often keeping its efficiency much less than 100%, even when energy is allowed to escape from the system. So basically you have thermal energy, if you convert thermal energy some way into mechanical or chemical energy or whatnot, you're going to have some heat escaping the system. It's never going to be 100%. Think of a car engine running. When the chemical potential energy of the gasoline is, is used inside the piston, it will release heat into the engine, causing the engine to heat up considerably. As well, that's why you have to have it cool down with with uh, with other types of fluids and with air coming in through the intake, because there's no way to completely use all that thermal energy to actually push the piston down into and produce work onto the crankshaft. This is because thermal energy has already been partly spread out among many available states of a collection of microscopic particles constituting the system which can have enormous numbers of possible combinations of momentum and position. These combinations are said to form a phase space. What that means is that if you have the explosion inside of a piston and all those gasoline molecules are moving around, not all of them are going to be moving directly downwards into the piston. Some of those explosions of the gasoline molecules falling, flying apart are going to hit the walls of the actual piston, and that's where the energy is lost. It hits the wall, it causes the engine block to heat up. But what you could do in the future, maybe somebody could design this, is to make sure that any energy that's inside of that explosion, inside the inside the piston chamber, none of the none of the extra molecules are moving in any other combination, any other direction except for downwards into the piston to push the piston down. That would make a car engine incredibly efficient if you could do that. In such circumstances, a measure called entropy, or evening out of energy distributions, dictates the future states of an isolated system must be of at least equal evenness in energy distribution. In other words, there is no way to concentrate energy without spreading out energy somewhere else. So... What they're saying is, is if you concentrate, uh, you you spread the you shoot the fuel into the into the combustion chamber, and you it caused that explosion. There's no way to concentrate all of it downwards without having it spread out somewhere else. That's just how entropy works. Everything becomes more and more disorganized. But as well, when it comes to stellar metamorphosis. The main energy transformation in this theory 
is taking gravitational potential energy, which means the body of the object. Okay, drew it right here. The body of the object is cohesive, and as it collapses, it radiates away a lot of that heat from the collapse. So you can't have a body collapsing on itself and compress all that thermal energy and compress all that mass without having a loss of energy. And that's how we know for a fact that black holes can't form is because when you have something that gravitationally collapses, it loses energy. And what's energy? It's convertible to mass. I mean, a small amount is, but for the most part, the star, as it collapses, loses mass to solar wind, flaring, and, and coronal mass ejections, and it loses its energy. So it's cooling down, it's shrinking, it's losing mass. There's no way to form a black hole if, if, you, if you gravitationally collapse something. So when people see that online, I just want to let you know that the black holes are impossible to form. So I don't know what, they don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what they're talking about. To form a black hole from the star is impossible because the star loses energy to outer space. It, that's why it's, it's why it's all, that's why they're all shining. <clears throat> if a star wasn't shining, maybe it would become a a black hole. But I've never seen a star gravitationally collapse without shining it. I don't even like talking about black holes. There's so many contradictions in there. It, it's unrealistic. But um. Basically, this is what I want people to look at, um, energy transformations. With stellar evolution models that are accepted inside of establishment, they do not have energy transformation taking place anywhere. They've already, they already threw their gravitational potential energy of the star collapsing is what causing it to shine, which actually is a big reason why they shine. But they threw that out the window in favor of the fusion uh, pseudoscience. So once they did that, they ceased talking about main energy transformations, such as energy released from gravitational potential energy, releases of energy from radioactive uh, potential. It says here, release of energy from hydrogen fusion potential. That happens inside of active galaxies, not inside of stars. And the main energy conversions that happen in stars are directly related to gravitational potential energy, meaning as a star collapses, it heats up and it converts all that potential energy into chemical energy, into thermal energy, into mechanical energy. <clears throat> says here, um, chemical energy in the, in the coal converted to thermal energy in the exhaust of gases of combustion Thermal energy of exhaust gas is converted into thermal energy of steam through the heat exchanger. Thermal energy of steam converted to mechanical energy in the turbine, and then mechanical energy of the turbine converted to electrical energy by the generator, which is the ultimate output. So that's just in a coal-fired power plant. Now think about a star. You have something that has a whole hell of a lot of gravitational potential energy, and it's collapsing on itself. All that energy is being converted into chemical potential energy in the form of chemicals and molecules and chemical bonds. And forming those chemical bonds releases energy. Those are exothermic reactions that are taking place. Some of them are endothermic, but a lot of them are exothermic. They release heat. When you collapse a star too, you make it hotter. So you induce heat into those reactions as well. And that's why the star can remain high. It's just, it, the gravitational potential energy is is uh, converted into thermal energy via friction because the materials falling back into the star at, at such a high high rate that it it's slamming into the, its, own, its own atmosphere and then you have mechanical energy taking place and we know this because there's there's a lot of motion in the atmosphere of the sun there's a lot of motion in the atmospheres of jupiter very evolved stars um as well the mechanical energy of the earth itself is very high too. Now think of the Earth as a giant crust being covered with one single crust that has cracks all in it. If you still collapse that, I'll bet very slowly because it's mostly solid and liquid material, it's not plasma like a young star, but you collapse it very slowly, wherever those cracks are, 
the the crust is going to push up against it because the whole thing is is shrinking and it's going to cause things like earthquakes. So we still have gravitational potential energy being converted into mechanical energy in the form of earthquakes. That's why earthquakes are so powerful because the entire earth is crushing itself. But you know you won't read that. You'll you'll read mostly about plate tectonics, how these plates are just pushing against each other. <laughs> Why would they push against each other? There's nothing to move a giant rock. What's moving a giant rock from side to side? It's not. It's because it's not moving from side to side. The whole Earth is crushing itself, and the plates are are an illusion from where the cracks are in the Earth, from where it's cracking and and, and crushing itself. But, anyways, uh, there's other types of energy conversions too. You have thermoelectric uh, conversions. Where you take heat and you convert it to electrical energy. That happens a shitload of new stars and young hot stars. Um, even in thunderstorms it happens. Where heat is converted into electrical energy. You have geothermal power where heat is converted to electrical energy. But that's with uh, power plants. <clears throat> you have ocean thermal power. Which is heat to electric energy. You have batteries which is chemical energy into electric energy. <clears throat> Basically, you have a whole bunch of different types of conversions, too, like uh, piezoelectrics, where you take strain of a solid material, and that converts into electric energy. Look those up. Those are really interesting. You have friction, which is kinetic energy into heat. A lot of friction happens in the internal regions of the Earth, where the magma and the liquid rock is rubbing against other areas. And you have fire, which is chemical energy into heat and light. So basically, th this is this is the the main this is the main uh, energy talk when it comes to stellar evolution, is that we have to appropriately place the stars' physical matter in light or er, er, model it in light of energy transformations, not theoretical models. Real energy transformations, where this material is interacting with other material. And this is possible because we, we can see what's happening on them, and we can see what they're going to become now. We know that Jupiter is going to cool and shrink and lose its matter to outer space, and it's going to become like uh, Neptune or Uranium. And those two stars are going to become like Earth after they lose their thick atmosphere. You know, or obviously before they reach ocean world stages, but... I mean, we, we can we can look at it, we can put the pieces of the puzzle together and use basic physics how and figure out how that material would have been converted from earlier, more energetic states of, of matter. And also that has to do with um, the phase transitions when you have plasma turning into gas and the gas turning into solid and liquid material. What type of energy transformation would have taken place for that to happen? But, uh, alright, I think that sums this up, uh, alright y'all, later.